Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today I've got some more tournament games for you. But this is... It's a very special weekend, ladies and gentlemen. This was the weekend when the new Pokemon trading card game set Breakpoint was legal for the very first time. So I got myself down to Mad for Miniatures in St. Austell in the most beautiful part of the UK, that being Cornwall. And I recorded a whole bunch of games to make City Championship. The format here is X and Y to Breakpoint. It is standard format, but Breakpoint is now legal. We are playing best of three we are playing 50 minutes, and I've made sure to get some decks in here that are using cards from the new set so we can see how good they are and we can start making an assessment of how much of an impact they're going to make. Huge thank you to Vinnie Gardner and all at Mad for Miniatures for allowing me to record and making it very simple. So sit back, grab yourselves a nice beverage, and enjoy this game from the first weekend when Breakpoint was legal. 50 minutes, best of three, X and Y to Breakpoint. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we are at the top four of this particular tournament. And on the right, we have me with my Garchomp deck. You saw me back, I believe, in round four. And on the left, we have Josh Poet Pierce with his Night March deck. And I believe we saw him back in round one. So I start with a whole Lucha, and I lose the flip. But I won the flip in top eight. I actually won the flip in 50% of my games this tournament. So there will, for once, be no moaning about me doing flips. Now... Josh is playing a Battle Compressor here. In this Night March deck, Josh is playing it very, very well indeed. It is running very consistently for him, and he has gotten all the way to the top four with it for a good reason. So Battle Compressor is an item card that is going to allow him to discard three cards from his deck and put them into his discard pile, and the whole deck revolves around that Pump Kaboo and the similar Joltik. Now, Pump Kaboo for three colorless energy, Joltik for two, have the Night March attack, which allows them to do 20 damage, for each Night Marcher, Pokemon with Night March as an attack, in the discard pile. So you also play four Lampant. Now that is a stage one Pokemon that you literally put in your deck so that you can discard it with cards like Battle Compressor so that when it's in the discard, it does 80 damage as standard. So we would expect, I was just about to say, now what Night Marchers do on turn one, it's either going to be three Lampant if they do have a supporter in hand or two Lampant and a supporter if they don't so that they can draw into a VS Seeker and then go ahead and use VS Seeker to grab Sycamore out of the discard pile and use it. Oh, and that's a beautiful acro bike. He goes and gets his fourth Lampant, a third Lampant, sorry, which you want to discard anyway. And it looks like he went and got a... um. It looked a little bit like he went and got a Sycamore as well, though I could be wrong. So he uses Ultra Ball to discard a Hex Maniac and a Lysander, which is incredibly useful because, as I previously said, both of those can then be discarded with, excuse me, reused using VS Seeker. And now we see a Battle Compressor coming down, so we can discard another three cards. And I was going to say, the first one is going to be a Lampant. And then potentially here he's going to be discarding Night Marchers as well. Now, Josh knows what I'm playing here. And there goes a Pump Kaboo and a Joltik as well. So all of a sudden now, we've got seven Night Marchers in the discard. Sorry, six Night Marchers in the discard. On turn one, oh, now there is, no, that is six. We've got six Night Marchers in the discard, which means he is going to be able to do 120 damage. Or with a Muscle Band, 140 damage. And the highest HP of any Pokemon in my deck is going to be Garchomp, which has 130. So one more Night Marcher or a Muscle Band. And Josh has got the KO right there and then, which is just super, super useful. Now Josh plays down a Shaman there. He's going to draw a bunch of cards. There is a possibility, very remote, that I could knock out that uh, pump Kaboom on the first turn of my game. So he does need to take the risk and pop the Shaman down there. I'm obviously thinking for my part, brilliant. This means I can kill that Shaman halfway through the game and try and jump ahead in the prize race. We're trading one for one here. Uh, and then we see another Battle Compressor. So three Battle Compressors on turn one of the game is quite frankly ludicrous. And then we see Zerosic, we see Giovanni's. So now what Josh is doing there, very expertly, he hasn't used a single VS Seeker, but he's got so many support, different supporters in the discard, he can play VS Seeker straight away and go ahead and choose whichever 
whichever supporter he likes. Oh, and I've just had to pass there. I've got nothing. And all Josh needs there was going to say, via Seeker for his Erosic, discarding that Focus Sash. And that's my opening hand. Four energy, stage one, Hex Maniac, or Lucha. Not a very good opening hand. And this happens sometimes in the Pokemon trading card game. There's every possibility Josh could have an opening hand of a couple of unplayable, because you saw how many tech supporters he played. He could end up with, you know, something like Hex Maniac, Giovanni's one basic four DCE. Unfortunately, it happens. It happens to the best of us. And my deck ran beautifully this tournament, with the exception of game one in round four, where I was on stream, and this game. Now, what this matchup basically comes down to is one-hit KOs with EXs. I can one-hit KO all of his Night Marches with just one strong energy on a Garchomp, and he can one-hit all of mine. Although I'm generally a turn slower, because if, even if I go second and get the first attack... I've got to generally take a turn to evolve into my first Garchomp. I can use Maxi's Hidden Ball trick, but it's very difficult. So, what I do is I use Focus Sash. Now, you saw me put on an M on my whole Lucha in that previous turn. And what Focus Sash does is if I would be one-hit KO'd, then you discard Focus Sash and your Pokemon remains on 10 HP. Now, we've seen that Josh plays as a Rosic, which can get rid of the Focus Sash, but it means that every turn, in order to get a KO, Josh needs a Night Marcher, and he needs a DCE, and he needs a Zerosic, or I suppose a Lysander to bring up a bench Pokemon that does not have a Focus Sash on. So ideally, in perfect situations with perfect draws here, I would give Garchomp the slight edge. Because if you can get all four of those Focus Sash down, Night March doesn't need to just grab a Zerosic every turn. They also need a DCE, and they need to grab a Night Marcher, and they need seven Night Marchers in the discard. And they only play 12 in total, and one or two of them may well be prized. So it can be difficult to get all of that every turn without playing, you know, getting a Night Marcher and a DCE without playing a supporter so that you can use a Zerosic is really, really difficult to do. However, Night March tends to be faster. They will usually get the first KO. And they may well be able to use a Lysander at some point, so they only need four Zerosic, and that's if I can get a Focus Sash down every turn, and so on and so forth. So Night March really tends to go faster, but if Garchomp can get going and have a decent start, then Garchomp probably becomes a favourite. It is one of Garchomp's more difficult matchups, I said in, in previous round. And I've, I've already done a deck analysis for my Garchomp deck. You can find the deck list with a full explanation on my YouTube channel, so go and have a look at that. It's had a, well, by the time this gets posted, it should be at about a thousand views. So go and have a look. I think it's a pretty good list. And it's got a lot of positive matchups. Lucario bats, and Manectric bats, and Mewtwo, and Evil Tal, and blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying Night March is a terrible matchup. We do see a mulligan there from... See, if you see a... a oh, no, because he had a Battle Compressor and a VS Seeker, so we could have had any support he likes. It is a very consistent deck, to be fair. And I think Garchomp is probably more prone to poor starts than Night March. Night March is a fantastically... That's the word I'm looking for. Consistent. It is a fantastically consistent deck. So, that's how I think the matchup plays out here. If I can get going with Garchomp, I feel good about my chances. If not, I don't. In top 8, I set up beautifully both games. In all the three, because I I'd did round 5. In the three rounds of Swiss where I was not on um, camera, I set up beautifully in, in all of my games. And I set up pretty well in game 2 against Mewtwo. Unfortunately, this deck can have poor starts. And I had, I just had a conversation with one of my friends just before recording this video. And he basically said, look, mate, I've been, I've been testing you. He didn't say mate, he's not that kind of guy. He said, hey, I've been testing a Garchomp list. I don't like the Acro Bikes. Why are they there? And my response to him was very simple. Well, look, I don't like Acro Bike. I don't want to play Acro Bike. But Garchomp has so many good matchups when it sets up. But there are games where it's not going to set up. So I have to play something like an Acro Bike or a couple of Acro Bikes just for on those games where you don't have anything, it could help. I don't particularly like Acro Bike. And I, to be honest, it doesn't rarely do me much. It rarely does me much good. But in that previous game, let's say one of those energies was an Acro Bike, maybe I draw something. So I start with a Gibble here, and that is good. Gibble's got a nice attack for one fighting energy. Oh, and I see a level ball and an ultra ball getting rid of two energy straight away. Now, I only play nine energy in this deck. So, the fact that I started 
five energy in game one. Was it four or five? I've already forgotten. But a lot. Let's say at least four. And then three energy in my first eight cards in game two. I play nine energy. That means less than one in six, which means starting two energy would be slightly above average. Starting three energy or four energy, not ideal, ladies and gentlemen. But like I say, this is a game with luck. These starts do happen. We can't moan about it. Well, I mean, I do moan about it. It is, in fact, known amongst my friends as Rossing when I don't draw a supporter due to bad draws. So I, I do moan about it. And I've even got a podcast, PTCG Radio, where I, in fact... Do moan about it a lot, but I shouldn't. It's part of the game, and you can mitigate it, like I've tried doing by playing those acro bike. So there comes down a Gibble, and I'm not sure the other card I got. I think it's a Gibble. There's a bit of glare, but it looks like there's a dark patch in the top right corner, which is the cave opening on that Gibble artwork. Now, if I remember correctly, my shaman is prized. Oh, sorry, I started, yeah. So I've got free Gibble and a whole Lucha. My Shaman is prized, if I remember correctly, this game. Now, I only play the one, and again, I can't moan too much about my one Shaman being prized, because honestly, if I played two Shaman, the chances of both of them being prized are much, much slimmer. But this deck really relies on the prize trade. And I'm just retreating into a Hall Lucha there because I can't afford to have that Gibble KO'd. Hall Lucha can only attack EXs. It's pretty useless in this deck. I really need my Garchomp, so I've got to... And I've burned three basic energy there, which is not ideal because that could lead me to have problems getting energy in the late game. I have also haven't got a Focus Sash down on that Hall Lucha, so that means I am handing Josh a KO without having to use a Zerosic. So a pretty poor start from me. Had I had a Shaman, I could have drawn some more cards, tried to get a bit of a setup. I play four Focus Sash to try and get one of them on the Hall Lucha. As it is, I've had to dump free energy. I didn't play a supporter, you'll notice. There was no supporter in my hand. So I didn't have a supporter again. And... My Shaman was prized, and I didn't have, you know, it, it, I'm drawing really badly. I've got four Trainers Mail, I've got four Corinna and a couple of Sycamore and all of that, but my Shaman being prized has hurt me this game. So Josh goes ahead and plays a Battle Compressor, dumps a couple of Lampant and a Sycamore, just like he did in Game 1, for the exact same reasons as in Game 1. We then see an Ultra Ball getting rid of a Milotic and... Is that another Ultra Ball? Maybe a different art ultra ball. Um, to get a Feebas down. Now that Milotic, I'm happy that Milotic went down. Because Milotic is a card, it evolves from Feebas, and it allows you to draw, uh, sorry, to grab one card, any card, from your discard and put it in your hand. And Josh needs those against my deck. He needs to reuse, oh, we see another Battle Compressor here, dumping a couple of Lampant and a, oh, and a Zerosic, because he knows he's going to need to VSC because that's Zerosic. And there's only one in his deck. So now, instead of drawing the one Zerosic, he can draw one of the four VS Seeker. So, oh, and there goes Dimension Valley. Pump can be, remember, attacks of free energy. So you have to play Dimension Valley to reduce your attack cost by one, so you can get a KO with a DCE like he does there. And this is my hand. Sacred Ash, Garchomp, Fighting Stadium. Somewhat exasperatingly... Um, I'm going to put the fighting stadium there so that Josh has to, uh, yeah, so that Josh has to get another energy or another stadium. But you can tell by my body language there that after drawing very well all tournament and then drawing completely dead in game one, I'm now drawing completely dead in game two. So after my deck didn't let me down at all, and we see the Milotic coming down there grabbing a, a Dimension Valley, and now Josh is two prizes up before I've even gotten going. Now, is that a Sycamore? So we do see a Sacred Ash here, recording, uh, recovering my Pokemon. Now this isn't ideal. I play one Sacred Ash, and I always seem to draw it early. And the problem is now, I can't recover my Garchomps. I might need, well, another kind of, I might need four Garchomps in this game. So, now Josh not also not having an amazing hand, but no argument there. So now, I've had to discard a Garchomp and... My Sacred Ash. So not only have I drawn no supporters or anything like that and gone two prizes down, but now I've drawn my one and only Sacred Ash, and I'm now at three Garchomps for the game. However, I play Maxis, which allows me to put a Garchomp on the bench if I play Maxis as the only card in my hand. Also, I get to draw five cards. And I play four Focus Sash. So it is not the end of the world here. By the way, you can't see it. I know my, my body language there when I kind of threw my hand down looked a little bit mean. What you can't see is me laughing and joking with Josh about how bad my hand is 
and how, you know, I finally get drawn against the matchup that I need to go fast and I don't, whereas the matchups where I haven't needed to go fast, I've done quite well. So I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, I was not, although, you know, the, the throwing my hand down looked a little bit aggressive and a little bit sullen, I do assure you that was not the way it came. And if Josh, if you're out there, you know, please feel free to put a comment in the, um, you know, put, put a comment down there if you think I'm, I'm being unfair here. But no, I do believe that I conducted myself in an appropriate manner. It wasn't as mean as it looked. Now you see here, now that I've gotten going, my deck's like, hey Ross, how you doing? Um, by the way, this is also the third game I haven't got a turn to Garchomp gotcha all day, all day. And they've all been on stream. I'm not, I, know, I could be lying. You have no way of knowing I'm not lying. But I assure you, I've got a turn to Garchomp gotcha every other game. Or unless I've got a turn to Garchomp gotcha here. Now I do have an acro bike. Oh, for an acro bike. <laughs> for a trainer's mail for a rare candy oh this is quite good okay so the acrobikes work there acrobike for an acrobike for a trainer's mail for a rare candy i also discarded the trainer's mail with the acrobike i was a little bit paranoid here that i'd use trainer's mail to grab a trainer's mail but i hadn't i'd used acrobike to get one of two trainer's mail and discarded the other one now do i have a garchomp and an energy here i do hope so I kind of, kind of, I've got the Garchomp, but I don't have the energy, so I'm having to leave the front gibble with a focus sash on. So it's been a slow start, and we know that Josh has got the energy, and we know that Josh has got a VS Seeker for his Erosic, so we know he's going three prizes up here. But it's not panic stations yet because he's already used one Milotic and the other is in the discard and that's what he's using to recover hands. We know he's used his Zerosic and I believe two VS Seeker? Oh no because I haven't that's the first Focus Asher I've put down. So we know he's used Zerosic and a VS Seeker here. So I'm going to go three prizes down and it, it, it's unfortunate. And it has been a bad start, although I really should start moaning about that before people go, right, Ross, I'm not watching your videos anymore. You're moaning about your bad starts too much. Although I think here I've got a point, but here's the deal. Josh doesn't have a bad start and I need to give a lot of credit to Josh here. His deck, I mean, you've seen how well it's run in both games. Now, there is actually a skill to decks like Night March that some newer players don't realise. It's not just about being able to get the cards out. It's about decision-making and it's about sequencing. It's about playing the correct cards. Oh, oh, and that's unfortunate for me. Lysander bringing up the Garchomp and getting the KO. You know, it, it's about sequencing. It's about, um... oh, and that's just a Sycamore there. And arguably, I, sh I should have, well, arguably I should have brought up the Gibble so that I could evolve it into a Gabite. Oh, but I've got the rare candy uh, anyway, so it's fine. There was a Gabite I could have gone up to a Garchomp. Now I get the KO here, because this is doing 60 damage. And I've got a Gabite on the bench, and I've got a Gibble on the bench, and I've got a Garchomp in the active with a Focus Sash. So it's not the end of the world yet. It's not great, I'm still two prizes down, but now my deck is rolling. And like I said, I can't have too many complaints about this game, and there's two reasons why. Firstly, like I said, one of the downsides of Garchomp, and of course I do 60 damage, plus 20 for the fighting energy, minus 20 for the resistance, and I get to attach an energy to my bench Pokemon. But also, you know... It, it is inherently a bit slower than Night March, which does give it a little bit of a disadvantage. And if they play cards like Zerosic, they can nullify your Focus Sash, and it does give them a bit of an advantage. Especially if you have a slow start. But like I've said, there is a skill to this Garchomp deck. There is a skill to the sequencing, the sequence in which you play the cards. And there is a skill in decision making and deciding which cards to play when. And clearly here... Josh is very, very good at that part of the game. He is running it properly. He's making the right decisions with Battle Compressor. He's discarding the right card with Ultra Ball. He's playing Shaman at the right time. He's playing Milotic at the right time to grab the right cards. He is playing this deck absolutely superbly. He's been playing Night March for a long time, and he knows what he's doing. In every tournament, you'll see a whole bunch of Night March players that don't get to the final and don't do so well. And the reason is that they're not so good at sequencing and decision-making. And a lot of people will use the same 
the same list for Night March, and I'll hear comments like, I just didn't draw as well. And then sometimes I watch these games back, and you'll hear me say it in some of my videos. People making the wrong decisions of a battle compressor, discarding the wrong things off an ultra ball, dropping a shame in a turn early when you could wait a turn and draw an extra free card when you don't need to drop a shame in this turn. Now, we are seeing Josh struggling a little bit here, because like I've said, he hasn't got a Night March down. And he doesn't have a Zerosic yet, and he doesn't have a DCE, because he doesn't have a Night Marcher down, and he's got to get that Shaman out of the active. And this is the problem when a deck like Garchomp gets going. You've got to have seven Night Marchers in the discard to get a one-hit KO on the Garchomp. At which point, it's then a very awkward thing, because your opponent, you know, like we see with Josh here, he needs to get the Shaman out of the active. Div. He needs to get a Night Marcher, he needs to get a DCE, and he needs to get either a Lysander or a Zerosic. But given that I've got a Garchomp active with a Focus Sash and an Energy, really he wants a Zerosic here. He wants to force me into having a Garchomp in hand to evolve that benched Gabite. But we see there he's got the Pump Kaboo, and we see he's playing very carefully. Now he's had to get rid of a Dimension Valley, which obviously he doesn't want to do. But, you know, you kind of have to, unfortunately. But I'm only playing two fighting stadiums, so he'll probably still win the stadium war. One of the few good things about losing game one so quickly, and it's, it's hard to find, a, you know, good things about it. But if you do lose game one very quickly, then it does mean your opponent doesn't get a good look at your deck and doesn't get to see things about your deck. I do want to remind you at this stage, I don't like being on stream. I don't... Because when I'm commentating other games, I look at them drawing badly, and I get to say, you know, they're drawing really badly, they're having a very bad time of it, and it's just that, oh, and he's got, oh, and he's got the pump kaboo, and he's got the energy, and he's got the float stone. But it doesn't look like he has anything in reserve other than an enhanced hammer. Ah, so a very interesting play. Whereas when I'm, you know, when I'm doing it myself and I'm moaning about my, my draws, it just makes me sound like a terrible person. Now, that was a very nice play, and we see a couple more Focus Ashes coming down. The reason it was a nice play is that Shaman does 30 damage, and now Garchomp, his Focus Ash is useless. Focus Ash only has an effect where it is the only card in your hand, and that's not the case here. So what Josh has basically done is said, look, I know you've got a few energy in the discard pile, and I know it's going to be difficult to you to one-hit KO a Milotic, Given, of course, that you're doing 60 or 80 damage and Milotic has 110 HP. So he's turned off my Focus Sash. He's picked a Shaman off the field, giving me less Lysander targets. He's put something in the active. I am going to find it very difficult to KO. And he's gotten rid of my energy, meaning that it's going to be very difficult for me to actually get a KO this turn. Now, the good news is I can Corinna, and I can grab a Garchomp to evolve the benched Gabite, and I can grab a, hopefully, a Professor's Letter for some energy. Hopefully, Professor's Letter is in my deck. Hopefully, there are more energy. We saw I had to, I think, dump three basic on turn one, but I play five, so hopefully there'll be at least one left in my deck. And the good thing about Garchomp is that even though you do dump some energy early, as we saw in games like this, you, you, when you attack with a Garchomp, he recovers an energy, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, I'm assuming that's a Professor's Letter, because I'm still searching my deck. Little bit of a glare on my side of the field, I'm afraid. But there's a Garchomp with a Focus Sash, a Gibble with a Focus Sash. Oh, and of course, there's an Energy, because I attacked with Garchomp. So the good news is, I do have an Energy, but Josh's plan has worked very nicely here. I think I've only taken one prize, if I remember correctly. So... The most I can do is 100 damage, and that ain't getting the KO, so I put the energy on the benched Garchomp instead. Now, we know Josh has got a, uh, what do you call it? We know he's got a um, Float Stone, because we saw it last turn. And now he's got the Pump Kaboo, and now he's got the energy. And there's a VS Seeker that he can use to get rid of that Focus Sash on the Garchomp. And I'm assuming he's going to do so. Oh, no. <laughs> he picked an AZ for a second there. Like we say, this is a very, um, you know, I'm not going to hold him to something like that. This was an exceptionally good-natured tournament and one in which I had an awful lot of fun. Now, here's the good thing, ladies and gentlemen. I've got the KO on that pump kaboo. I'm doing 60 damage. At which stage, Josh is going to need another Night Marcher, 
another DCE. Now, the good news is he's not going to need to get something out of the active because he's got a float stone onto my low tick, which now has free retreat. So there's one thing taken away. The other bonus is that he's not going to need to grab a Zerosic or something like that because he's got the KO on the active Garchomp because that Focus Ash is irrelevant. But he'll still need a Night Marcher and he will still need an Energy. So we see a... Um, Oh, that's Maxi's, ladies and gentlemen. It works, and it's so good when it works. I told you in the previous game about the difficulty I was having due to Garchomp's being taken down. And there, I had a VS Seeker as the only card in my hand. I played it down, grabbed a Maxi's hidden ball trick, and I get to put a Garchomp straight on the bench and then draw five cards. A lot of people have been criticizing my play of one Maxi's in this deck, telling me it's rarely going to work. And they're right, it works Wow, there were two turns, there were two times in this tournament it did work, and there were two times I was gonna have it, and then I top decked an unplayable card, so Maxi's wasn't the only card in my hand. But it happened in top eight and it happened in top four. And on the games where it does work, it makes a huge difference. So I really can't overstate the importance of something like Maxi's in a situation like that. And I draw into the Professor's Letter off the five cards I get from the Maxis. I don't quite know what I'm doing here. Am I playing an Ultra Ball? Oh, I'm playing a Battle Compressor, sorry. I'm playing a Battle Compressor and getting rid of three useless cards so that if I... You know, to, to basically to make it more likely I'm going to draw into what I need. I'm going to need to basically keep those Garchomps going. I might need a Lysander at some point, so I'm just drawing into them nicely. So now I've taken a couple of prizes. Now I'm still two behind, but I'm putting Josh under a lot of pressure. I've got one Garchomp there, and if he can't KO it, I'm going to take a prize next turn. And I've got another Garchomp in reserve. Now I'm slightly worried about that Gabi on my bench. I'm slightly worried I'm out of Garchomps. Because I had to discard one early game, which I've now recovered. And I think Josh might have KO'd a couple. So I might be out of Garchomps at this point. Although, a Gabite can KO a Joltik. Because he does 20 damage and Joltik is weak to fighting. So, yeah, there is a Gabite on the bench. Currently doing 40 with Sand Tomb. Which is not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. So I think I've taken two prizes. He can't quite see here. Um, oh, and I think I'm going to lay them out nicely. Ah, oh, thank you, Ross. That was a very nice thing for me to do at a very opportune time. So, you saw how close I came to throwing in the towel early game, and I'm making a bit of a comeback here. Having said that, Josh now has the KO. He's got a Joltik. That Focus Ash is doing nothing. So, Josh now goes down to one prize. But the game isn't over yet. Because now, my Gabite has got the KO. Now, the other thing I can do here, and it's a little bit of a pain, but if I can get two strong energy and a fighting stadium, or just three strong energy on a whole lucha, I can actually one-hit KO a Shaman. Now, it's, it's not an ideal play, but it is a potential play. Now, I don't, I don't know how many fighting stadium I use. I've lost count. Similarly, I don't, um, I don't play any muscle band in this deck because Focus Ash is too gosh darned important. But there is a possibility here. I mean, could I get a second Maxis? It's asking quite a lot, to be perfectly honest, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to sand tomb here for a prize. Why not? Now, the other thing I can do here is use sand tomb again, because sand tomb stops your opponent's Pokemon retreating. You saw me use this to great effect in my top four game against a Hooper, and I actually won a mirror match earlier in the tournament with this. Uh, in round one, my opponent played Garchomp and played no... No switching cards, no AZ, because everything had free retreat. So I just, I had one prize left, I was out of Garchomp, so I just hit a whole Lucha with a Gabite, using Sand Tomb, and off we went. Now, am I going to get an opening here? Now he's got to put that Milotic up active, which means I am getting a KO this turn if I want it. Um, now I will need another strong energy... Or I'll need to attack with the Garchomp here. Because Gabite at the moment is only doing 40. 
Now, Josh is thinking about putting that Shaman active. If he does, it basically forces me to attack with Garchomp. But if I don't have a Focus Sash, that means he's got a potentially easier route to KO next turn. So it might be in my best interest to try and KO the Milotic here. That would force him to put the Shaman active. And then he'd have to get it out of the active. And he'd have to get a Night Marcher and a DCE. If I could KO... If I had a Lysander... Strong energy, light, um, focus sash here. No, no, I'm being an idiot. Um, I mean, ideally, I want a focus sash and I want a Lysander. Because if I can KO that Milotic with Garchomp and put a focus sash on it, then that means that he's then down to one Shaman, and I can go ahead and kill the Milotic, and... He then has to put the Shaman active, and then to get the win, he's going to need to get a Night Marcher, and a DCE, and a Zorosic, or a Lysander, in order to get the win. Although he did take a Lysander at his prizes recently, so he might have that. And this is what I was talking about in the early game. You saw what happened in the early game. Oh, and I do have the Lysander. Why? I should be playing it. I really do need a... F I mean, even if I don't have a Focus Sash, it's not the end of the world. But this is what I was talking about earlier. You saw Josh take a free prize lead this game. And you've seen me claw my way back. And I'm now in, not, in a not terrible position. You can now see me winning this game. And this is what Garchomp does. You saw, and Josh is playing this game. I genuinely believe he's playing this game exceptionally well. I mean, the comment section is there if you disagree with me. But to be perfectly honest, what's Josh doing here? Now, I think I'm about to make a misplay here. But you see here, now that I've gotten going, I've forced Josh into some very uncomfortable plays. I forced him into, I've, I've forced him into, you know, having to use Shaman to waste a turn, getting rid of my Focus Sash. Yeah, I'm going to make a very, very silly play here. And it's my own stupid fault, and it might cost me the game, so I'm going to go down to two prizes remaining. See, the thing is, that Garchomp, I don't know if I'm, I can't remember exactly, but I think I'm about to. A lot of people read the Garchomp as if it's Baby Evil Tal or Baby Landorus. That's right, Nick. Baby Evil Tal or Baby Landorus. But you can actually attach an energy from Garchomp to any Pokemon. Now, I don't, and what I'm doing here is basically trying to build up a whole Lucha. If I put that strong energy on the active Garchomp, as I am entitled to, then I can one-hit KO that Shaman next turn. As it is, I'm going to run out of energy. And I don't think I'm probably going to get the KO because I've already used a whole bunch of energy. A lot of people, and I didn't realise this, and it's very stupid of me. It's very stupid, I admit that. Although I know for a fact I'm not the only one. So don't pretend you didn't get confused as well. You can attach from Garchomp with his attack to Garchomp. And if I do that here, I can one-hit KO the Shaman, and if I've got a Lysander next game, if, of course, Josh whiffs the KO, which is far from a given, then I've got the win. But I didn't. I put down a whole Lucha, and the reason, and I am out of Garchomp here, otherwise I would have just put it on the Gabite and searched for the Garchomp. So I know I haven't got the Garchomp. I know I'm out of Garchomps. I know that that Whole Lucha cannot KO a Shaman without a second strong energy and fighting stadium. And at this stage of the game, that Shaman is uh, that Shaman is not getting KO'd by a Whole Lucha. I don't need it. Had I attached a Garchomp like the card entitles me to, I've probably got the win next turn. Assuming, of course, that Josh doesn't get the win this turn. And he's, he's still searching. Now, there's a Fighting Fury belt to put onto Shaman. That is... It's going to help. Because now Shaman's got 150 HP, which essentially goes up to 170 HP. Which means that one strong energy doesn't get the KO. And that's pretty huge. Now he's doing 40 damage here, which won't get the win. Okay, so it wasn't a huge misplay. Because honestly, even if I'd have attached it to the Gabite, I'd now just be retreating the Gabite. And I still wouldn't have the second energy on the Garchomp. Okay, so I feel slightly better about myself now. Um, because putting the energy on the Garchomp... And to be honest, that... I made the worst play I could have made. Putting the energy on the Holucha doesn't really do anything. Putting the energy on the Gabite means I could have retreated it next turn. Putting the energy on the Garchomp means I've got a KO if I've got something like an AZ to pick up the Garchomp. 
or indeed an energy to retreat the Garchomp. Although, actually, Shaman with resistance, Shaman's effective HP here is 170. I was like, no, I would get the KO with a strong energy because I'd be doing 180, reduced to 160 with the resistance, but Shaman's got 150. Ah, oh, so I do have the energy to KO, and I am officially an idiot. Had I had the strong energy on that Garchomp, I would currently be hitting for 160, and I would have the win. So I have just, after, and you saw how bad my start was in game two. I have just misplayed myself out of the win, ladies and gentlemen. That is a very silly play on my part. I should not have benched the Horlucha, that's irrelevant. And I really, really should have used Garchomp's attack to attach a strong energy to Garchomp. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Had I done so, I'd be able to hit 160, plus 20 for the fighting energy, minus 20 of throwing energy, minus 20 for the resistance is 160. Shaman's got 150, and that is a terrible, terrible misplay. I had this game won, ladies and gentlemen. We could have gone to game three, and if I draw well, you've seen that this is a far from unwinnable matchup. Read your cards carefully, ladies and gentlemen. This is top four of a City Championship, and I've just misplayed myself out of the win. Now, in the final... Yeah, Lysander, KO with a Gabite, he's got the win. Lysander's a Gabite, gets the KO with Shaman for 40 damage. Um, I'm in shock, quite frankly. <laughs> So he's just, he's just explaining it to us nice and simply. Very upsetting. And I lose in top four. And quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, it's my own gosh darn fault. That was a really silly misplay. I had the win. And when you can go down three prizes to Night March and still have an opportunity to win, that says good things about your deck. Now, the most upsetting thing about this is that me and Josh both know that the other top four game finished quite quickly. Night, uh, Mewtwo won. Night March has a crazy good Mewtwo matchup, and as we saw in round four, and I explain it in great detail there, so please go back and have a look. Garchomp has a crazy good Mewtwo matchup. So we both know that the winner of top four is the overwhelming favourite in the final, and that's what happened. Josh won the tournament. Now, just to be exceptionally clear, I am not saying I would have won game three. We've seen how good a Night March player Josh is, we've seen how well his deck runs, we've seen how good a player he is, and we've seen that my deck is slightly prone to slower starts. But at least I would have had a chance in game three. And quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, that is more than I had. So I threw away the top four, and that's very, very silly indeed. But this is how we learn, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm now fully aware that Garchomp can attach himself with the first attack. And whether I was unaware of that, I was just thinking something else is irrelevant. If I put the strong energy on that Garchomp, I, it, unless Josh had done something differently, and I'm not entirely sure what he could have done, I'm fairly certain I win that game. So, upsetting, but these things happen. Huge thank you, as always, to Josh for agreeing to be on stream. And a huge thank you for the final time, because I didn't stay for the final, I'm afraid, because it was quite late, and I wanted to go home and see my girlfriend, because I was in Cornwall at the time with my girlfriend, and I'd, I'd made her wait long enough. Huge thank you to Vinny Gardner and all at Mad for Miniatures for an incredibly inviting tournament. They have got a regional championship there on April the 17th. I shall be there, and hopefully I shall be recording again. Huge thank you to Vinny and all the people at Mad for Miniatures for making me so welcome and allowing me to record these games. I'm going to be back very shortly with a video telling you why you should be excited for Pokken Tournament, and then we've got seven games from Blackpool Regional Championship to get through. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be fantastic. As always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Like it, 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 like it. There we go. Comment if you've got anything to say. Mock me in the comments for my terrible play. I won't hate you for doing so. It was very stupid on my part. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. And of course, look after yourself. Till next time, PTCG Radio.